Hello, hello, I'm back and today I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of working with gradients in cavalry. There's quite a lot of things that I want to show you, as you can see here. So we are going to try a different approach today. I'm not going to show you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to create something, but rather we are going to talk about how it all works, how we can modify those things, how we can apply it in different uh, situations. So let's just dive right in. Okay, let's start with our basic setup. We're going to start with index to color. We just have a path over here that you can draw with a pen or a pencil tool. And then I have an ellipse shape and I put it all into the duplicator. So we set the distribution to path, uh, increase the count, uh, the amount of our copies and drag our path over here. And now our ellipse is distributed over the path. Then we create an index to color utility. You can do this with a quick add menu like this. Just search for index to color and then set our gradient. Uh, you can add the colors over here. You can uh, adjust them manually like this or you can uh, drag and drop it from our color palette, or you can also uh, click here to select the gradient and set gradient from palette. So basically you can import any color palette you like from the internet and then just set the gradient like this. But the way it works, it maps our uh, gradient into the indices of the submesh. So it works with any submesh, whether it's a duplicator or it's a text layer. We have all of those indices and then basically the first index is going to be this color, the last one this, and then everything else is somewhere in between. The problem with this method is that we cannot really cycle through the color. We cannot loop it, you know, so like if I want the blue to move and then, you know, go like this, it just not going to work with this method. You could try to animate travel, but that's not really ideal because it's going to, it's not going to look good, you know. I'm going to come back to this problem and I'll explain how to actually animate the color going through the pass just like this. But let's just look at a couple of other examples that we can do with index to color. This is basically just uh, an ellipse shape uh, distributed with the Fibonacci distribution and then the text animation. So in this case, we don't really need to go and animate the colors in the index to color. So we don't want to cycle through this. What we do is we just animate a text shape. So I animate position and the scale. I group it to preserve the animation and add it into the duplicator set to point point and increase the count to 100 and then there is the index to color that is connected to the fill of the text same thing as with the path and the way that we do this trail is we are adding a stagger behavior into the shape time offset so the shape time offset kind of sounds self-explanatory but if you're new to cavalry you might not really understand how it works so you might think like Let's remove it. So you might think like maybe I'll just set the number here and uh, it will offset uh, the animation, but that just doesn't work because we need a sequence here. So uh, what the stagger does, it gives us a sequence between minimum and maximum. And if you increase this value, like if you want to make the trail uh, longer, then you can like set it to 10 or something. If you set the value too high, uh, you will get this rough edges because there's not enough copies and of course you can increase the copies you can experiment with these values i think it creates this kind of cool old school uh, animation effect and let me show you a couple of examples of some stuff that i posted on instagram like for instance here i'm using index to color and it works well for the um, style that i want to achieve then here I'm also using index to color to assign the values to each of the copies. I want them to kind of like blend in between each other. And now let's have a look at how we can actually animate the gradient um, color moving through the path like this one. And the setup is the same. It's a duplicator with the shape, uh, ellipse shape and the path. And then we just create a color blend behavior so the color blend behavior also has the gradient the settings are a little bit different we connect the color blend into our ellipse shape fill color and basically what it does it provides the color information for each of the shapes and all of the shapes are the same color information from this behavior so if for a second i'm going to delete an oscillator what happens is that all of our shapes are now the same color 
based on the strength. So if I increase the strength, it, all of them are going to change the color at the same time. And obviously if I animate it, this is what happens, right? So if I come back and I add our oscillator and just for a second, I'm going to turn off the stagger. So the oscillator is uh, changing the color of each of the shape from zero to 100, because those are the settings of that we can put our strength from zero to 100, which zero is equals this color and 100 is equal this color, right? And then everything in between. Right now, they're all changing at the same time, but if we add a stagger value, uh, we will basically shift the animation time for each of our copies. What happens now is that they create this gradient effect. Let's see what else we can do with this method, right? So in this case, I'm also using basically the same setup. There is a color blend with this green, white gradient, but I want to change this green color to blue and then back to green as well, right? So when I animate it, it's sort of not just moving through the past, but it's also changing the color. So to do that, I can actually connect another color blend. So I created a color blend, green, blue, same with an oscillator without stagger. And then I connect this color blend into the value of the first main color blend. This is how it works. We also can connect a different behavior into the strength. So in this case, I used noise. So it created this a little bit more random effect and we can use it with the a text. Well, this is not technically a text. So I use a voxelize distribution and a text shape fed into the voxelized distribution. If you don't understand how it works, you can watch my tutorial about the voxelized distribution for the duplicator. And we have this basic line and it's duplicated. And then there's just a simple oscillator on the shape rotation of this duplicator. This is basically how it looks. And then the setup is the same. It's just the color blend for the main color change. And then there is a color blend fed into the first one. All right, let's have a look at another method. It's called number range to value. So first I replicated this quick example from the documentation. So the number range to color takes numerical values and it remaps them to colors based on a gradient. So if we open the number range to color, we see we also have a gradient, we have minimum and source maximum. So we set those numbers manually. So let's say in this example, it's minus 100 and the 100 and we have a value field. So we need to feed some numerical values in some way. Uh, in this case, we are taking this shape Y position and we feed it into number range to color value. You can see when we move the shape up and down here in this corner, you can see that the value is changing, right? And then we simply connect number range to color into the target, target fill color. And then obviously what happens is that when we go up, we go like over 100, we have this white value for this shape. And then when we go down, it goes to green. So how does this help us with the gradient? We can use the same methods, uh, it's the same path. And then we have a number range to color. Uh, let me close this. And we set the source minimum and maximum zero and 10. And instead of using values of position or whatever, we can actually connect a behavior here. And in this case, I'm using an oscillator. So an oscillator is shifting between uh, zero and 10, as those are uh, the values that we set here. And if I turn off the stagger for a second, you see that basically each of the shape, just like with color blend, is just moving between the values of the gradient, right? Between the minimum and the maximum. But if we set the staggers, same thing happened. The copies are going to change their color values with a little delay, and that creates this gradient offset animation. Same thing for the text or, you know, the duplicator text sort of mix animation. This is just a little bit different example. And this is how it works with the Fibonacci uh, distribution. 
So I just tried all these different methods in the same, you know, setups so you can see how it works. And then of course we have our basic gradient shader that you can find in the effects and the way that we use it, we go into the fill or stroke and then we just click here and add a shader and there is an option of just like a simple gradient shader and then there is a multi-point gradient shader as well. Once you add it, you have uh, these five options as uh, a conical gradient, linear gradient, shape gradient, etc. You can add stagger, oscillator, noise into a scale, a rotation, offset to create some interesting animations. So let's have a look at a couple of examples that I did. So we just have this basic line fed into a duplicator in the grid and an oscillator on the shape rotation with a little stagger. So this is how it looks. And I simply added a gradient shader. There's no animation over here. It's just a very, very basic example. And what do we do if we want to have different gradients, right? And to do that, we need to use a shader array and it's the same setup. You just need to add a shader array instead of the shader here. And then you connect the gradient shaders here and by default it will be set into auto index so it distributes our gradients automatically but what we can do is we can fit different numerical values into the index to tell our duplicator how do we want to distribute these gradients right so in this case in this example i created a random behavior and then i connected it into the shader array index so uh, we can also animate the minimum and the maximum values to create this sort of reveal effect and so when we play this uh, basically some of the shapes have the green gradient and some of them have the blue gradient we can also try to fit different numerical values into the shader array so in this case for instance it's a noise so then the the gradient shaders are going to shift from one copy to another and then this is how it works with a voxelized distribution we can also experiment with the different modes so in this case i have a sweep gradient and i connected a noise into rotation so all of our copies have this like sweep gradient rotating but at different time because there's also a stagger on the shape time offset i don't know <laughs> i hope this all uh, makes sense and there's a little bit of oscillation in their length of the basic line and you can have this very interesting kind of sparkly look and this is another example there's just a rotation an oscillator rotation on the shapes and also we can kind of combine uh, all these methods together like in this case i have a, like a typical gradient shader and i fit the color blend value into the shader right so we can animate this color right the way that we did with the color blend method this is another example it's just simple ellipse with a stagger on the radius we create like uh, multiple copies with the different radius values set by our stagger so from 0 to well apparently 487 but you can uh, decrease or increase this you could also experiment with the graph of the stagger to create some different fun effects on the radius but i'll just keep it linear for now and then i also use a sweep mode here oscillator on the rotation with a little bit well with a lot of stagger <laughs> and uh this is how it looks you can also use a frame on the rotation so all of the gradient animations are just following each other so that's pretty much it about the gradient shader there's a lot of ways that you can do it that you can use it and have fun with it and let's look at the last setup this is something that i've used in this post so i wanted to create a custom gradient and there are a billion ways in cavalry obviously that you can set it up but one of the ways is to just simply create an ellipse shape and put it into a duplicator and add some noise on the scale and on the position so we'll just have all the circles moving around just like this i also connected the color array to the ellipse shape fill color so we have all those different colors and set blend mode 
to lighten and then we add a blur on the duplicator and then uh, you go into your main composition and you use another shape or whatever it is like a text layer as the track mat okay i think that's it for today and i hope you get a better idea on how you can use gradients in cavalry and how you can animate it and uh, which method to use in different situation and let me know if you like this format and if you have any questions and i'm um, looking forward to see you in the next tutorials